Once again, the Montgomery County Council has been very active, and I want to take a look at two items in particular, that being the Child Investment Fund proposed by council members uh, Will Jawando and Gabe Albernalis, and the zoning text amendment to allow affordable housing to be constructed uh, adjacent to places of worship. Two very interesting uh, proposals. Marcy, I'm not sure exactly how the Child Investment Fund is supposed to work, as I read it, you know, it's, it's going to draw funds from the general fund um, and that will be segregated for the what they call the CIF for all children born to parents living in Montgomery County after uh, this past January, January 20, January 1 of 24. And when the child reaches 18, they then may apply for disbursements to be used for school or to start a business. It's kind of a broad, broad brush description. But more importantly, the eligibility standards are also kind of broad and ill-defined, um, but it does appear it's going to be means-tested. So what, is, that, is that the best way to handle this? First of all, I think this is uh, a genius um, measure. I think, um, you know, when it comes to who contributes to the revenue to, uh, for Montgomery County in general, all taxpayers, um, and individuals who may be undocumented with a tax ID and get no return for their contributions. So this is a genius way to re redistribute the wealth. Um, and like you very well mentioned, it would be based on the means and income when that uh, child reaches an age of majority to have access to those funds. And so it is very bare bones. Um, it's my understanding that it just was introduced they, there will be hearings this summer, uh, but it has not, you know, it, it's very, very bare, bare bones. And I think that when it comes to the eligibility for, um, you know, what you want to use the funds for, you know, it makes sense that it is to, to basically reinvest those dollars into Montgomery County. So you, if you could start a business, you could invest in a business. It's to be able to buy a home. Um, and it's also uh, for, so, so you're able to invest in retirement. So when it comes to, um, you know, individuals who, are born into wealthy families and they're savvy enough to, you know, put their money money away before it's taxed, for example, um, then, you know, it's almost, it's just a redistribution of, 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 of funds. So I think um, this is very bare bones. There's definitely gonna be more to be looked at. It's my understanding that it, uh, there's a composition of 13 uh, members of an advisory board who's going to really look into the, the nuts and bolts of what this program would ultimately look like. You know, uh, Lori, last week uh, on the last, the last show we did, we didn't have a show this last week because of Easter, Easter break. We talked about the vanishing middle class in Montgomery County, how statistically uh, we are our low income class class of, of, of residents are increasing. Our wealthy class of residents uh, is increasing, but the middle class is seeming to disappear. You know, what ha what happens to the forgotten middle class? Shouldn't their children be eligible as well? Nobody should be eligible. This is the government is not a giveaway machine. Um, and I think Marse actually made me realize this is this is a this is going to this is for the undocumented. That's what this bill is for. And our money is going to be going toward people who cross the border without, uh, you know, legal, without doing it legally. And, and why should we you have pay to be born in the United their... States to receive those funds, Lori? You have to be born in the United States? Correct. And in Montgomery right. County. So. Well, then, uh, okay. So, yeah, but their parents are probably undocumented, right? So that's the point is what I'm trying to make. And, um, and I want to ask, what is this effort trying to accomplish? Is it going to help families? Uh, you have to wait till you're at least 18 to collect the money that, that the government put aside for you. Um, how does that help families raise their children? Um, it provides a little extra income later, but it doesn't help them raise their children in the very important time when they have to be doing well in school and be fed and have their supplies for school. Um, does it help kids to be ready for college or career? No. Should our money be going towards that when it does nothing to help our kids be ready for college and career? No, this is not accomplishing anything, but it's just a big giant government giveaway. I don't think this is the um, a genius idea at all. Uh, and it and it goes eighteen hundred goes into for each child, and then not every child it doesn't come out that way. It sounds like only the low income kids would get the money. So how's that fair to all the other kids? I mean, yes, middle class. Well, 
and yeah, upper class should be eligible for it if there is one. But I say, say no, we should not be doing this at all. It's, we're going to have to leave the debate there because you know we have another another piece of legislation that's also been introduced that I want to talk about. And Mar and Marcy, I'm quite intrigued by the zoning text amendment introduced by Council and uh, Council President Andrew Friedson and Council Vice President Kate Stewart to allow housing to be developed adjacent to places of worship, because on the surface, it would expand the amount of land available for housing. I think this is another really uh, amazing and creative way to um, build uh, so that we have more you know, housing available for folks that can't otherwise afford it. And uh, frankly, you know, when it comes to specific um, areas of the, 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 the zoning code that are going to be affected. What it tells me is that leaders within the faith community and or the educational institutions that have land actually came to the county council with this idea. So, um, you know, I think this is also going to, you know, bring up or maybe in incentivize other sectors to do the same. And that way, land that has otherwise been kind of just out there and being wasted can actually now serve um, you know, our, our housing crisis that we have in Montgomery County. You know, Lori, I think this is a really intriguing uh, proposal. I think how it's going to be administered is is going to be, you know, very, very interesting as well, because if I was a pastor of a church and I wanted to develop land for additional housing, I would like the congregation to have, be able to have access for it. Or if I ran a school along with the church, I like to be able to have workforce housing for my teachers. So, uh, what you know, are we forgetting that you know that there are other uses besides just affordable housing here? You know, I think it's really sad that the American dream is now the Democrats' version of the American dream is workforce housing. I mean, workforce housing when we used to have houses with yards. I mean, what, we're now working towards workforce housing. What, what does that say on where our communities are going? Um, I, you know, I, I just, I feel like uh, millennials are paying attention. They don't, they don't like the fact that they had to pay for their own college and have loans that, they're, that they've paid back already. And other, other young people are gonna have Biden cover it for them. That's their money. They know that, they're smart. They, they went to college, they know this. Um, and they they know that uh, their their gas powered cars that they love are going to be taken away from them because Biden is trying to push electric vehicles. Millennials are watching, and um, you know they don't they don't want the workforce housing. They want a house. They want their child to be raised in a safe community. And um, and Democrats aren't aren't doing it when they say let's have more workforce housing. Well, but we we have a we we do have a land crunch here. And we, we have to realize we have to maximize the use of our available land. And that's why I think it's, it's an intriguing uh, proposal that has been introduced. But I, as I said, uh, I think how this is going to be administered is going to be uh, subject of debate uh, as we go forward.